Hello everyone, this is Lolly. Today I am combining some of my favorite things. One is crinkly sounds and two is shakers. Now you know I've been doing a few videos lately with cereal bags and I made this shaker. I've shown one way to do it when I did my Alice in Wonderland journal and that was to take uh, your cereal bag, fold it over, shiny side in if there is a shiny side cut it down to size and use a flat iron to just get the edges, leaving the center open. But I'm gonna show you another way using your home iron so that you don't have to use a flat iron. Let's start creating. So what you need is a cellophane bag. Now you know so many of your craft supplies come in cellophane bags. So just make sure that it's not, you know, too scuffed up and dirty. This will cover a multitude of sins. <laughs> This will really hide a lot of the issues because it's cloudy. Um, and so I have this one. I do want to get that little flap off there and this does not have to be perfect. So I'm just cutting the entire flap off and you have to decide how big you want this. If you look at my first one, you can see that it did not go all the way up here. It's somewhere around here. So if we wanted to be consistent, and again, I don't have you perfect on this. And it doesn't even have to be a complete bag. So if I use this, for instance, I can cut it down the middle and cut it in chunks. It can be, oh, it can be two separate pieces. It doesn't have to be sealed on either side. But you do need to come over and get some of your, uh, put this down here. You do need to measure out, not measure, but eyeball and get some of your cereal bag cut out and you want it bigger than your cellophane. And again, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna use these pieces because they are pretty bad here. These jaggedy, this is where the bag used to be sealed. Okay, so, and this doesn't have to be folded. This could be two separate pieces. Let's just figure out. I just need to have enough to go all the way around like that. And then I'm gonna take this to my iron and I'm going to press it. Once I put this on the inside, it doesn't matter which way this goes. On this, you want shiny side in. And then I'm going to put this here. I'm gonna leave a border all the way around. And I'm going to sandwich this in between some uh, parchment paper so I don't ruin my iron. Now. I put mine on a polyester setting and it only took about like eight to 10 seconds. And I'm going to trim this, leaving a border of cereal bag all the way around the bottom and two sides. But when it comes to the top, we have to cut that right at the edge of that, of that cellophane bag in order to open it up. Now what you're actually seeing on the inside is the cellophane bag. It's preventing the two edges or the two sides of the cereal bag from sticking. So that's actually the cellophane bag on the inside. Now you can fill that with whatever you want. And because it's a really thick, we could put whatever we want in there. Um, I have, ooh, these flowers are pretty. Um, ooh, these are, this is really cute. This has some of the flamingos in there. These are all from the, um, the kit, the, from Buttons Galore and more. And you can decide how thick you want this. I'm gonna put some of these in there too. These are circles and hearts. They're little gems. They'd also be great just glued onto your project. Whoop. These are really cute too, these little balls. Uh, I think these are just adorable. These really are better for really thick shakers, but we can make this as chunky as we want. That's really cute, love it. I think I need more of these in there, oh my gosh. Okay. Now you notice with this one, I had put die cut bees in there and it makes it so cute. Okay, now let's talk about sealing this top. Oops, 
I like to sew mine, as you can see with this one here, I sewed it shut. The main reason is that this is really waxy. You know, I'm gonna need some more, or I, that, or I'm just gonna cut this shorter, I think. Uh, this is so waxy, it's hard to get an adhesive to stick to it. So I'm going to show you right now my tests in different adhesives on this material. So I tested several glues here. Gem Tac, Fusion Tac, Power Tac, Barely Arc, Fabri Tac, Double Sided Tape, Weld Bond, Thick Gel, which is the Ultra Thick Gel Medium, and Hot Glue. Knowing that this is waxy and I want to see which one that these would hold on better. While Gem Tac, not at all. Fusion Tac, somewhat better. Power Tac, not at all. Barely Art. Fabri Tac tape better this just fell right off thick gel Ooh, this is good now it is it's taking so long to dry that you see it's actually keeping the paper on there so that's actually a good sign and hot glue that also kept the paper on and the paper just tore so i would say it's a toss-up between Dina Wakely Ultra Thick Gel Medium and Hot Glue Gun. So I hope that helps so that you don't have to sew on yours. Okay, now sorry about the glare here. Um, so you could see you, you could use one of those other techniques. This takes quite a while to dry. I would let it sit overnight or 24 hours. Hot Glue Gun worked pretty well. I am just going to measure this and use a scrap of paper. So I need three and a half inches wide. Now this one I have is about one and a half inches tall. This is a die that was like a, a border frame and I just cut the end of that frame off. So let's get some scraps. Okay, I'm using this. It's paper from, I think it's die cuts with a view. Yes, no problema. And this has itty bitty llamas on it and what I did before, I just used some tape to adhere this to the bag just to hold it so that I could run it through my sewing machine. And yeah, it's probably not the best thing for your needle to have it go through this adhesive. Just saying. Now I like to line this up on the grid. And I'm going to have to use some paper glue or liquid glue for the part up here where the cardstock is going to touch cardstock. Don't put the glue on the tape, <laughs> Lolly says. Okay, I'm going to line that up right there. And there we go. Now I have to just look and make sure this is perfect. And I can kind of round those corners. Could have distressed the edges if I had wanted. And if you want a hook or a hole there, you could you could put an eyelet. I used the Euro hook, um, which gives this really cute, like hanging tag look. So I just kind of laid it here to eyeball where the center is. And there is a little line there that helps you to line it up. And you can see there how cute that is. Okay, so I lost a big video portion. I just took the Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher and stapled across here and then used my Fabri-Tac in this glue bottle to glue my trim all the way around there and cover the staples up. You don't have to cover the staples up. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. What would you use these for? Please leave a comment down below and tell me how you would use these. I just think they are so fun. I love the crinkability, as I call it. And I, I would put these in pockets in my journals. They, this one's nice and flat and would actually make a great bookmark. So um, these ones are thicker, especially with the button embellishment. And you'll see this one, I just took two buttons and the only thing attaching them is this baker's twine right in there. Thanks for watching and give this video that thumbs up.